Hello and welcome back to English is Easy. I'm your host, Connor. This is the show where I use very slow, clear, and simple English to help you improve your English. Today we're going to be reading a story together. Yeah, we're going to be learning English through story. Now, this is a non-fiction story. In other words, it's something that really happened. It's a true story. So, first we're going to read the story together. Then I'm going to ask you some reading comprehension questions to check and see how well did you understand the story. After that, we are going to talk about vocab, vocabulary. Yeah, we're going to take a look at some of the more difficult words in the story, and we're going to make sure that we understand them. Finally, at the end of today's lesson, we are going to have a bonus speaking challenge, an opportunity to improve our spoken English. You know, so many of my students, they tell me, ah, it's easy to practice your listening, right? You can listen to an audio book. You can listen to a video. It's English. It's, it's easy to improve your reading as well. You can just read an article or a book, but it's not so easy to improve your speaking, right? So I wanted to make sure that we had some speaking practice as well in today's lesson. Now, guys, before we get started, I want to ask a small favor of you. This is a brand new YouTube channel. I started this channel only one month ago, and a lot of you have subscribed, and a lot of you are liking my videos, so I want to say thank you very much to all the new friends who are following this channel. If you have not followed this channel, if you have not subscribed, please take one second to like this video, subscribe, and maybe even leave me a comment letting me know who you are, where you're from, and maybe why you're learning English, okay? Now, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and start reading today's story. Once upon a time, in the early 1900s, there was a very famous ship or a boat called the Titanic. It was the biggest and most luxurious ship ever built at that time. Luxurious. What does that mean? It just means it was really fancy. Very fancy, right? It was a very, very nice ship. The Titanic was supposed to sail from England to America on its maiden voyage, its first voyage, its first trip. People from all over the world, they were excited to travel on it because it was so grand and beautiful. Grand just means amazing, incredible, impressive, right? The Titanic was huge, as long as four city blocks and as tall as an 11-story building. Oh my gosh, really tall. I didn't realize it was that tall. It had everything anyone could want. Fancy restaurants, a swimming pool, a gym, and even a library. There were first-class cabins for rich people, second-class cabins for people who could afford a little less, and third-class cabins for people who didn't have as much money. On April 10th, 1912, the Titanic set sail from Southampton, England. There were more than 2,200 people on board, including passengers and crew. Crew means the people working on the ship, right? The ship was supposed to reach New York City in about a week. So it was going to take a week to travel from England all the way to New York City. For the first few days, everything was going well. There were no problems, I guess. The passengers enjoyed their time on the ship, eating delicious food, playing games, and attending parties. Ah, oh, that sounds awesome. Sounds really fun, right? 
But, uh uh-oh, on the night of April 14th, disaster struck. Mmm, disaster struck. What does that expression mean? That means something really bad happened. It was a cold night, and the sea was calm, so there weren't big waves, right, if the sea was calm. The crew had received warnings that there were icebergs in the area, but they didn't think they were in any danger. The Titanic was considered unsinkable, meaning you can't make it sink, right? Because it had 16 watertight compartments that could be sealed off if there was a leak. However, at around 11.40 p.m., very late at night, the ship's lookout spotted an iceberg directly in its path. Okay, so it's right in the way, directly in its path. The crew tried to turn the ship away, but it was too late. The Titanic hit the iceberg on its side, tearing a long gash along the hull. The hull. The hull, that means the body of the ship. And a gash is kind of like a wound, right? Like an injury. It's this open scar along the hull, along the body of the ship. In other words, the iceberg ripped open the body of the ship. At first, many of the passengers didn't realize what had happened. But soon, the crew sounded the alarm and everyone knew they were in trouble. The ship's captain ordered the lifeboats to be filled with women and children first. The crew worked quickly to launch the lifeboats, but there weren't enough for everyone on board. The Titanic only had enough lifeboats for about half of the people on board, and many of them were launched only partially filled. Partially filled, what does that mean? That means not completely full. There are still some empty seats, some empty spots on these lifeboats. As the ship began to sink, panic set in. Panic set in, what does that mean? That means people started to get really scared and they started to freak out. People were screaming and crying as they tried to find a way off the ship. The crew did their best to maintain order, but it was chaos. They did their best to maintain order. That just means they tried really hard to keep people in line, to keep things running smoothly, to stop people from panicking, right? At around 2.20 a.m. on April 15th, the Titanic disappeared beneath the icy waters of the North Atlantic Ocean. More than 1,500 people died in the disaster, making it one of the deadliest maritime tragedies in history. Oh my gosh, horrible. In the days following the sinking, rescue ships arrived to pick up the survivors who were floating in lifeboats or clinging to pieces of wreckage. Wreckage, that means parts of the ship that are floating in the water. The survivors, they were taken to New York City, where they were met by crowds of people who had come to hear their stories. As you can imagine, people were pretty curious about these survivors. They wanted to go meet them. They wanted to hear firsthand what had happened, right? The sinking of the Titanic shocked the world, and it led to changes in maritime safety regulations. Ships were required to carry enough lifeboats for all passengers and crew, and stricter rules were put in place to prevent a similar disaster from happening again. The Titanic remains one of the most famous ships in history. And the story of its sinking continues to capture the 
imaginations of people all over the world. I'm sure many of you have seen the movie Titanic, one of the most famous movies of all time, depicting, depicting, or showing this tragedy. Okay, so now I'm going to test how well you guys were listening, how closely you were paying attention. I have three listening comprehension questions, and I'd like you to try and answer them. So after I ask these questions, you can pause the video and either say the answers out loud, or you can leave me a comment in the comments section of this video telling me the answers, okay? So here are the questions. Number one, what were some of the luxurious amenities available on the Titanic? In other words, what are some of the nice um, things that the crew provided on the ship? What were some nice things you could go and do on the ship? Number two, why did the crew believe the Titanic was unsinkable? Why did people not believe that the Titanic could sink? Number three, how many people survived the sinking of the Titanic? In other words, how many people lived? And what changes were made to maritime safety regulations as a result of the disaster? In other words, how did they change the the safety protocol and regulations and rules about what ships had to do to keep people safe moving forward after this disaster. Okay, go ahead, pause the video, and let me know your answers out loud, or you can leave a comment in the comment section. And now let's move on and talk about some difficult vocabulary. I have three vocab words and terms for us to talk about today. First, we're going to learn the definitions. Then we're going to read an example sentence. Okay? So the first word is maiden voyage. Try saying that out loud. Maiden voyage. That means the first journey, the first trip of a newly built ship right? So you finish building a ship, it goes and it takes its first trip, its first journey, right? That's called its maiden voyage. Here's an example. The Titanic's maiden voyage was supposed to be a celebration of its grandeur and luxury, right? It was supposed to be a celebration, this trip. It was not supposed to be a disaster, I mean, just imagine that. This is the biggest ship in the world. It's going to take its first trip across the ocean from England all the way to America. The people who boarded the ship, they were definitely thinking it was going to be one big party, right? It was not one big party, unfortunately. Our second vocab word is watertight. Watertight. That means designed to prevent water from entering or escaping. Entering means coming in. Escaping means going out. So the ship was supposed to be watertight. No water was supposed to come in. No water was supposed to go out, right? The Titanic's watertight compartments were supposed to keep the ship afloat in case of an emergency. I don't think they worked as designed. I don't think they worked as planned, right? Okay, our third and final vocabulary word I'd like to talk about is maritime. Maritime. That means related to the sea or to navigation, connected with ships or the sea. Yeah, so about the ocean, about sailing, about boats, right? An example would be, the sinking of the Titanic was one of the deadliest maritime disasters in history, right? One of the deadliest maritime disasters. Okay, there's our three vocabulary words for today's lesson. Now, as a final challenge, I would like to give you an opportunity to... Um, 
to flex your English speaking skills, to practice your English speaking abilities. So here's what we're going to do. I will give you one minute of time. During that minute, I want you to retell the story that we read today. In other words, tell me the story of the Titanic and use your own words, okay? This is a really effective way to practice your English speaking skills, to paraphrase, paraphrase. That means to take something and put it into your own words, okay? So let's go ahead and start that one minute timer now. Guys, that's the end of today's lesson. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope this lesson was helpful for you. And once more, please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel, leaving me a comment. You know, these sorts of things are so helpful for a brand new YouTube channel. They really help me so much. Um, so thank you very much, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.